clerk note the roll um, that all commission members are present except for Commissioner Miller. We're glad that you're here, Gary, um, even though it's via telephone. Well, I would like to congratulate the vice chair on the Bayern Munich victory um, of uh, earlier today, and uh, I'm ready to let you uh, run the show. <laughs> Thank you. It was a great game. <laughs> um, let's see. The minutes, does anyone have any changes? Minutes. Mr. Chair, on the uh, last page, uh, it says, it says Commissioner Ryan responded to another commission, then another commission member. Change that. It's more of a spelling error typo. Um, in the minutes that I have, it's corrected. Um, I don't know if online, Joe, that if that's the if that's the case on page eight. Commissioner Peters moved to continue the case. Is that oh and then no, below that later that okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Do I have the other motion to approve? Okay. Uh, yeah, if there's a uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the minutes of the last meeting with uh, <coughs> Commissioner Peters change to uh, the name on page eight. Is there a second? Second. The motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The minutes have been approved. Um, public comments. Is, is there anyone who wishes to speak on any item that's not on the agenda um, tonight? Obviously, M Mr. Prescott. Uh, David Prescott, uh, representing Newland Communities, 2850 East Kelbeck Road, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here. Uh, just to request that the commission place on a future agenda, possibly in May, um, where I could come back and request a commission initiative to remove a stipulation, actually be stipulation number two on zoning case 07-200-00010. And um, my understanding of the way this process works is at that hearing, that wouldn't be a hearing, at that meeting, I would try to make the case that I'd like the commission to initiate the amendment or the change the removal stipulation. And, and if you did, then it would go through the regular public hearing process. So this request is just to put it on the agenda so we can discuss it. I'll uh, ask staff for s sort of the, the process. Is that something that happens sort of internally or is that something we have to take action on um, you know, to be proactive to request that that be done? Well, uh, ordinarily an, um, an adjustment to a stipulation is uh, treated just like a, a rezoning case where we would publish, public, publish for it and uh, review it in that manner. I guess what Mr. Prescott is su suggesting that uh, he wants to make the case to the commission that the commission initiate that action uh, at our expense as opposed to his expense and I suppose if he wants to approach the commission and, and make a case in that direction uh, we can probably accommodate it but uh, I'd like to consult with my colleagues before I commit to uh, agreeing to do that. Is that agreeable? Okay. Um, and I saw Mr. Jones making some gestures. I didn't know if those were <laughs> okay. Um, disclosure of ex parte communication. Um, None. None. Okay. I have one, Sean. Um, the Kevin Kugler uh, and I have had a couple of discussions on the Cotton Campbell, uh, Cotton Camel case that's coming up in uh, New Business. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Um, all right, um, moving on to old business, um, case 10-300-00001, the Santerra Crossing Fuel Station and Convenience Store Use Permit. 
Um, I will open the public hearing and have staff give a presentation. Thank you. This case is on old business because it was continued from the last meeting. It was continued in order for absent members of the commission to be present to consider the request. The 1.2 acre site, 1.82 acre site is part of a 32 acre commercial parcel within the overall Sentara PAD at the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway and Van Buren. Uh, that commercial parcel is currently in the PAD amendment process when it was originally approved, it was just designated for all commercial uses. The applicant would like to now add multifamily uses, but the amendment is not necessary for, for the use permit to be considered. Uh, land uses adjacent to the commercial parcel are additional commercial, commercial parcels to the north, residential Sentara PAD to the east and the south, and vacant, undeveloped property to the west. Uh, the 1.82 acre site, as I said, fronts on Estrella Parkway and sits within the commercial parcel approximately 364 feet south of Van Buren. The south entrance drive is aligned with an existing full median break here on Estrella Parkway. And it, that drive will also serve the remainder of this commercial development, commercial and proposed multifamily development. Um, it's anticipated that there will be uh, additional commercial parcels along Estrella, additional commercial uses, and then there will likely be a hotel right here behind the convenience store. Uh, the proposed multifamily is here in this southeast quadrant of the commercial parcel. The conceptual site plan that was submitted with the use permit application depicts a 5,000 square foot convenience store along with eight gasoline dispensing pumps under a canopy. In addition to the entrance drive at the median break, there will be another on the north side of the facility. And again, this will go in to serve the remainder of the commercial development, commercial and multifamily development. Uh, the applicant is proposing that this facility be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The application meets the zoning ordinance conditions and required findings for a use permit to be issued. And it also addresses the zoning ordinance evaluation criteria for review of convenience uses in automotive service stations. The site is also within the city center gateway overlay district and staff has recommended conditions on this use permit application and also will take it through a site plan review process that we believe will ensure that the design standards of the gateway district are met. Uh, when the application was before the commission on March 17th, there was a motion made to approve the use permit, recommend approval of the use permit, and the vote was three to two. Under the commission's rules of procedure, uh, an applicant is required to obtain four affirmative votes to have that motion be approved. Therefore, it was actually a denial. Uh, there was an immediate motion by another commissioner to continue the case. That was approved unanimously, and that brings us back here tonight so that all of you can reconsider the use permit. Does anyone have any questions uh, for staff? Commissioner Williams. Is, is there some other history to a request for a use permit for a fuel station in this development that goes back a little way and there was an agreement or a request or something to move the, to put the filling station on Van Buren east of Estrella Parkway? I, I can't tell you about any agreements, but there was a previous submittal that was made by Quick Trip 
to locate a convenience store with gas pumps on this parcel right here that's just been X'd out. Uh, it was in the review process uh, through the staff level. We had, had provided some comments on the application. There was some response to that, uh, various discussions at the staff level. And then at some point in time, Quick Trip decided to pursue a parcel further north on Estrella Parkway, north of uh, Van Buren. But uh, bottom line, there was some effort to relocate the gas service station to Van Buren Street east of Estrella Parkway rather than fronting on Estrella Parkway? From right here at the corner? You mean? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure if this happened before I was on the commission or how long ago, but uh, I've heard some discussions of where earlier an applicant wanted to put a filling station in this development and face on Estrella Parkway and through negotiations or, and I'm not sure how they got there, uh, but it was decided that the filling station would face onto Van Buren east of Estrella Parkway rather than to face on Estrella Parkway? Well, I believe, and again, this is before me, but I believe the property owners came in, I don't know if Quick Trip was the client or not, may have been, had a pre-application meeting with some members of staff and was told by members of staff that they did not believe that council would approve something right there at a, a convenience store right there at the corner. It's my understanding that they accepted that answer and moved on and then came back with it located further to the east. Thank you. I, I, yep. Um, public comments, uh, the applicant, Mr. Jones. Mr. Vice Chairman and Mr. Chairman, who's appearing telephonically, and members of the Commission, uh, we believe the staff has given a thorough presentation uh, of this case before you, the use permit case. I want to apologize for not being here last month. I had a family emergency, was not able to, to be here, and Karen Keith came and, and, and presented before you, and she's here this evening as well to correct me if I do anything wrong and answer any questions that you might have. Um, I understand that la the last month's meeting uh, was on March 17th, and thought that we'd send Karen in because the luck of the Irish and we would move forward with an approval. However, we didn't get that approval. Uh, according to the bylaws of the commission, you have to have four votes in order for an affirmative vote to move a case forward. Uh, that's a bit unique, actually. Uh, a majority of the quorum present is what uh, I'm accustomed to in other cities. I believe the bylaws here uh, suggest you have to have four. And so with the breakdown, I know unless the commissioners, there was three in favor, two opposed. And again, in my mind, that's a majority. You move forward with the case. However, you need one more. So Commissioner Short, welcome to the commission. <laughs> These gentlemen here got to vote last month. Uh, I've had discussion with staff. Uh, and unless the two that voted no last time had an epiphany and loved gas stations on Astoria Parkway, your vote is the only one that counts tonight. <laughs> in order Welcome for this to case to move Justin, forward. I'm here. To speak as, as bluntly as possible. And, and obviously the, the chairman is on the phone unless he's changed his mind. Is also no, 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 I'm, I'm still in favor of this. Okay, so I had an extensive conversation with uh, Harvey Krauss on my drive over here. He was on his way downtown Phoenix uh, to go to an Eagles concert. Sorry, I told everyone, Harvey, that's where you're at tonight. Uh, we're here at the Planning Commission uh, looking for Commissioner Short's vote is what he told me. So we, you've heard the presentation, staff has given a recommendation of approval on it. The site is zoned for a gas station. As Commissioner Williams alluded, there was, prior to my involvement on the site, the applicant had come forward for a pre-app meeting or pre-pre-app meeting with staff and was given some, some strong and discouragement about locating any gas station on Australia Parkway. And as a result, tooled the, par the, the site plan to have it on Van Buren and had a quick trip um, engaged to go on that site. We were involved at that point. Uh, we'd gone through all the staff reviews. We even had a neighborhood meeting, um, and, and staff was present. I believe, uh, Karen, you were at the neighborhood meeting. Quick Trip was there. 
and we were moving forward, we'd have been coming to you last fall with that. And then Quick Trip located another site on Estrella Parkway for the gas station. Um, and it surprised us because we had been told that you couldn't have a gas station on Australia Parkway, which is why three months ago you had me here saying, wait a minute, staff has always said you couldn't have a, a gas station on Australia Parkway, and now that position has been clarified, and yes, you can. And so that, that was like, that was not a political statement when I said, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes, you can have a, a, a gas station on Australia Parkway. So as a result, uh, my clients retooled its application as well to re lo relocate gas station that was going to be on Van Buren and reorient it to Australia Parkway to be at, um, on par and at a competitive, uh, not to be at a competitive disadvantage with a gas station that has now been approved on Australia Parkway just up the road. Um, as staff has indicated, there isn't anything in the code, there isn't thing, anything in the ordinances that would prohibit a gas station along Australia Parkway, uh, which was unbeknownst to us at the time, and they're recommending approval of this case and would welcome your Vote Commissioner Short, I don't know if you have any questions about staff's presentation or the history or if, if there's any reason why you wouldn't support this case this evening. I have no questions. Okay. Uh, Commissioner or Chairman Gelzer, you're on the phone. Is there anything you would like to chime in and talk about? Um, no, Dustin. You look good on, on the Internet. And I got a haircut um, today just for you. Thank you, and I, will be, and I will be voting in favor of this uh, proposal again. All right. Any questions from those that were in opposition last time that I might address? Commissioner Schlosser? Does your client have a, uh, another user? There isn't, well? there isn't a user tied up right now for the site. I know they've been in discussions with a number of just name, brand name uh, gas stations that would be interested in the site. Um, this being just the use permit, it's just to grant the use permit for it right now. It would still have to go through the appropriate site planning, administrative review of, of the bays and the, and the, de the uh, architectural portions of it at that time, but a specific user has not been identified for the site. Thank you. But once the use permit's obviously been approved, it's, it's much more marketable, um, Commissioner Schlosser. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Jones? I, I don't hear there was an epiphany <laughs> that occurred in the past 30 days. N not from this commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. With that, I'll conclude my comments. All right. Thanks, Dustin. I'm going to close the public hearing and request uh, for commission action uh, motion on the case. Mr. Chair, I move to approve case number 10300000001. Second. Okay, got a uh, motion from Commissioner Peters and a second from Commissioner Schlosser. Um, now is the time for um, commission comments. I don't know if, you know, I think you guys are on record and uh, if you'd like to reiterate your, your case, that's fine. Otherwise, Commissioner Williams. Yeah, I have a concern with gas station and uh, Mr. Jones was very eloquent three or four months ago in his presentation in delineating why gas stations shouldn't be allowed on Estrella Parkway. Uh, uh, you know, uh, my concern, and it's just, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have the statistical evidence that the planning department would have, but my concern is that if the first thing that goes in there is a gas station, that will attract the fast food restaurants and the in and out that we really want to prevent or certainly limit in the, is it the city center gateway area? And, uh, you know, I, I would rather see the gas station on Van Buren because I'd like to see the fast food restaurants and the in and outs and that kind of thing on Van Buren rather than on Australia Parkway. On Australia Parkway, I'd like to see uh, upscale developments, <laughs> sit-down restaurants and uh, office plazas and medical suites, that sort of thing, uh, to, to help enhance the appearance of the whole city center three or four mile stretch from Van Buren clear to the ballparks. Thank you. No, I have no comments. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that I can say it any more eloquently than Commissioner Williams just said. Um, I have some concerns about you know, having 
gas stations as a use on Australia Parkway. I would much prefer them to, to be south of the ballpark. I think that that might be, you know, better as well for the, um, you know, residents uh, further down um, in the city, um, as well as keeping with the character and um, uh, ideal that, you know, I've been involved in in the development of, of the city center over the years. Um, so that being said, you know, I think my position has been fairly consistent, um, you know, on this issue, both on this case last month as well as the one the previous month um, with the quick trip um, case. Um, so that being said, um, you know, I, I remain opposed to, um, to this particular case at this time. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of the motion, uh, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The chair votes aye on the phone, Sean. Got it, Gary. Nay. No. By your vote of four ayes and two noes, uh, you have recommended um, case 10-300-00001 to the commission. All right. Our next case is uh, new business, case 09-200-00013, the Cotton Camel Center PAD rezone. I will open the public hearing and we will hear from Mr. Kreccia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, Commission members, uh, this is a request for a PAD for 16 acres located at the southwest corner of uh, Camelback Road and Cotton Lane. Surrounding uses at this point in time are mostly agricultural. To the east, we have an existing substation along with a planned uh, business park. These will be light industrial uses, commercial up here at the corner. Proposed Liberty Vistas 303 business park to the south and pro likely proposed commercial here, commercial development here to the west. Uh, the subject property is designated with a loop compatible land use area within this zone. Uh, commercial and light industrial uses are designated in the general plan. And the property is inside the 65 LDN noise contour for Lee Air Force Base. And this here is just the existing zoning, again showing a mix of I-1 and commercial uh, surrounding the property. To the north is Maricopa County uh, Rural 43. Uh, it is a residential zoning uh, with one unit per acre, but uh, Maricopa County has a similar land use designation for this area, so it'll likely be developed as an employment center. And the PD proposal is for a mix of uh, commercial and business park uses. Uh, the north half of the property is promoted for the commercial, south half for the business park and also with in the PAD is a proposal for this pad here right on the corner to be developed with convenience commercial uses. Uh, within the PAD for the general commercial and the business park, it does contain a specific list of uses allowed uh, within each zone. This is the conceptual PAD development plan, again showing the commercial uses to the north, the business park, flex industrial type buildings to the south, and the convenience uses on the corner. Uh, within the PAD request, there was a request for convenience uses to be allowed 
uh, by right with this approval of the, the PAD. Uh, normally convenience use is uh, use permit use. Uh, however, with this entitlement, with approval of the PAD, uh, development of a convenience use could take place uh, at this arterial corner. <coughs> Given that request, uh, staff and applicant work to provide a sufficient amount of information within the PAD so staff, uh, the commission and city council could evaluate this request. This site plan is showing a uh, conceptual layout of what could take place on the site. Uh, you have a convenience store, drive through restaurant, car wash, and a fuel station mixed all in here on this pad. Uh, it's good to note that there's a drainage channel that'll run along the entire north and east boundaries of the property. Uh, channel width is about 50 plus feet, uh, and that channel will be uh, contain enhanced landscaping and be designed with a natural setting. It will not be a, a typical concrete line structure, but more of a, a natural amenity, which will provide an additional setback, uh, natural buffer from the public roadways. These were just conceptual elevations provided in the PAD to give an idea of what this site could develop, what the buildings might look like. Uh, for this PAD request, uh, all public notice requirements were followed. Uh, staff has not received any public inquiries in opposition to this request. Uh, we find the PAD is in conformance with the property's land use designations as specified in the general plan. Uh, we do find it will be compatible with the planned uh, land uses within the area. Uh, staff also finds that the convenience uses would not be a detriment to the public welfare and that they would also be compatible with the planned uses in the area. Uh, as such, we are recommending approval of this PAD amendment with one additional stipulation which was presented before you and basically the stipulation would just remove daycare centers from the PAD and with that mr. chairman my presentation is concluded the staff and the applicant are available for any questions have uh, questions for staff oh yes please what was your logic behind excluding daycare center mr. chairman Commissioner short that conversation uh, originated with uh, chairman Gelzer um, he had a concern with having I I'm assuming a use that would allow a population of, of a dense population with an area close to Luke Air Force Base. It's so Steve. Steve, can I can I interrupt? Um, the for Kathleen's benefit, um, several years ago there used to be a Duncan Family Farms that was in the, the very close to this vicinity, and it was a um, had a lot of school kids coming to it. And the city wound up buying the property um, because it lost because of its closeness to the um, the APZ, the two hazard zones at the end of the runway, and so my thinking when I read through the list the list of allowed uses was let's not bring in another type of use that could create you know uh, that kind of a situation, and so you know so I talked with uh, Kevin Kugler and Steve. Um, last week and said, this is my concern. If we can get a stipulation to remove this, um, then, you know, I, I would not have any problems with, with uh, you know, with, with the application. And so that, that's the background of why that use is being removed from the, you know, uh, uh, allowable uses in the, in the general, I think in the general section of, of this property. Thank you. That, that was very helpful. Um, in the applicant's response? We're fine with that, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? 
I, I have I have one more, Sean, if I might. Um, Steve, the site plan that we are will be granting in this PAD amendment. Um, will the are we just granting in the site plan for the convenience use, the car wash? And the general store and uh, the fuel pumps, et cetera, in the restaurant. Uh, will that have to come back as a? Will this site plan be pretty much what is going to be followed, or is this a pure conception and, and and things can flip around, but they all have to be in this general area? Uh, Commissioner Gelzer, or Chairman Gelzer, uh, with most use permits, the site plan submitted with that use permit is conceptual. Uh, staff would look for some kind of substantial conformance with this layout. That is part of our evaluation of this site, to where they have drive-through windows not facing onto public roadways and such. Things will. Oh, okay, you, you, you've answered my question. In other words, the elements would be there and they would have to conform to our usual standards, um, but they might be slightly rearranged based on a client need. Is that, do I have that pretty well? Is that pretty well the way it would work? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chair, I assume that uh, the feature 303 on and off ramps won't, just won't interfere with, with the construction of that in the future? Mr. Pierce, with this site, no, we haven't had any, no discussion with the 303 affecting this site. I think we're a little too far west for, you know. No, I, I'm just not sure how much room that takes for the on and off ramps. I don't know if, you know, it'll extend into that area or not. And I'm not, not that I've heard of coming this far affecting this site, this property. Yeah, no, I have just a comment and it's kind of just to make sure you all know that some people read these things, but you say the white tanks are approximately six miles east. Last time I looked, I think they were west. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Steve, I have one quick question. How, how often um, do we sort of grant the convenience use um, as, as part of this process as opposed to, I don't want to say circumvent being the right word here, but sort of the, that subsequent use permit um, option or requirement. I think the typical PAD that we've seen, I, I say the, I think I can only think of right now one exception as I know the Goodyear Plan Regional Center PAD, they did something very similar. All their convenience uses, fast food restaurants, car washes, those were permitted uses. They did that up front with the zoning, the PAD zoning. Not sure if I can think of any other cases where. No, uh, Mr. Chairman, I can't think of any other cases either. Uh, however, most uh, projects aren't willing to commit to the level of detail and specificity at this stage. And so what you'll end up with is a conceptual site plan and then they deal with the individual use permits later in order to kind of maintain flexibility in their, in their development. So um, it's a little bit unusual for an applicant to commit to this uh, level of detail, but it uh, is certainly acceptable. Steve, um, applicant, Kevin, do you want to give a presentation just here for questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, no, no presentation per se. I think Steve, uh, Steve did a good job of giving you a thorough overview and as Commissioner Williams pointed out, had an excellent opportunity to thoroughly review the uh, material. So we appreciate that, Commissioner Williams. Um, you know, we certainly appreciate staff's uh, recommendation and, and to kind of bridge on to what uh, Joe and Steve had touched on that 
uh, I'm fortunate in this case to be working with a client who's uh, committed to wanting to bring quality up front. And it, it isn't every day that you want to, uh, at this stage of the process, bring that level of detail. And we've been working with staff uh, in total for over a year on this case, and specifically s uh, for about six or seven months with respect to the uh, convenience commercial uh, aspect of it, because uh, we know how important uh, select aspects of that are, both to yourselves, counsel, and to staff, of course. So uh, we went to great lengths to bring that level of detail. And as Steve pointed out, we, we do uh, the double-edged sword of the channel uh, serves as both a, a, a significant buffer where we have over 100 feet set back uh, from the, canop the gas canopy to either road, 150 feet to Cotton Lane and uh, 119 feet or so to, to Camelback. So um, again, it's consistent with and conforms with the general plan and is compatible with Luke's mission and uh, we appreciate staff's recommendation. So I'll entertain any other questions that you have. Mr. Chairman. Do you have any users for this property, user or users? Uh, getting closer. Uh, the, the short answer, uh, Commissioner, is, is no, not right at the time, to be honest with you. Uh, but the, that is one of the reasons the client wanted to go ahead and take the extra time and expense to bring the detail into the convenience commercial. Um, he's very excited about this, about this particular corner with the advent of the 303 going to be ultimately coming in and activity levels picking up on the Suncor uh, building in the area. And while things seem stagnant right now, we think things are getting ready to take off. And our client, I think, has that vision to see this corner taking off um, for that convenience commercial aspect, as well as commercial office as well, or professional office, excuse me. So. The reason I asked that question, Commissioner Peter sort of, sort of uh, touched on it. it. Do you know how far west of the on and off ramps <coughs> this will be? Uh, well, it's next to Cotton Lane, which is about, in Cotton Lane to the freeway is about one half to three quarters of a mile at this particular location that the freeway kind of angles, as you know. Um, so somewhere between a half and three quarters of a mile. The reason I ask that question, it just seems like it's for a convenience type of use. It just seems like it's sort of off the beaten path, at least at this time. I, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman and uh, Commissioner Schlosser, yes, at, at this time, at this snapshot in time, that might appear to be the case, but as activity level uh, picks up, unlike some other um, convenience uses that are located on prime arterial corners, perhaps have neighborhood adjacency issues to residential, this is the exact opposite where we think this particular uh, site is going to thrive in the face of a significant employment core uh, that's going to occur in the area. And so those convenience uh, services um, my client expects this could be one of the higher <coughs> grossing uh, convenience stores per square foot uh, in the city once the employment uh, is generated. So yes, th as that critical mass of employment and job creation is there, uh, this site will, will do very well. Okay. Might, not, might not be tomorrow, but <laughs> it's going to be someday in the near future. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Gary, you have any questions? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Um, any other public comments um, on this particular case? With that, I will close the public hearing, and I will call for uh, commission action, a motion um, on the case. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll recommend <laughs> that we recommend council approve case number 09 200-00013 with stipulations including the added stipulation number 14. So motion by Commissioner Williams. Do I have a second? A second. Second from Commissioner Short. Okay. Uh, any comments from the commission? Okay. Um, you've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye from Connecticut. <laughs> All right. Uh, by your vote of five eyes, yes, five eyes and zero, no, six. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, that disembodied voice <laughs> doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to register. Six eyes, you have approved um, case 09 200 0013. All right, next item on the agenda is case 09-200-00017, the El Cidro PAD amendment. Um, and welcome back to the podium, Mr. Correccia. Thank you. Uh, 
this is the existing LC drill PAD up here on the aerial uh, boundaries in red, uh, 637 acres. Basically, we're looking at uh, Lower Buckeye Road on the north, M385 on the south. Uh, we have a property on either side of Cotton Lane, and then we move west to Citrus Road here. Uh, this building is uh, the former Rubbermaid building. Uh, we have Goodyear Crossing right here. We have existing residential development within uh, Canyon Trails here in Cottonflower. And then we have proposed residential development to the north along with the high school. And we have existing residential development within Maricopa County uh, here and here. Uh, PAD zoning was uh, approved, approved in 2007. Uh, later amended in 2008. Uh, the applicant has come in with another amendment to the PAD uh, in response to the evolving nature of uh, the Loop 303 and the uh, drainage channel, and along with the addition of uh, additional properties that the applicant would like to add into the PAD, uh, pr mainly this property right here, 20 acres, they would like to add into the PAD, assign it a commercial land use along with some right-of-ways that the applicant is processing abandonments for, those properties then would also be included in the PAD. This is a page from the staff report. Uh, staff report kind of outlines the request that this PAD amendment is for. Uh, the additional properties, uh, the new multi-use, land use, uh, the townhome designation. Uh, I won't read them all, but they're, they're outlined in the staff report. And basically those amendments uh, result in this revised land use plan. Most of the residential, there, there's no change to the residential. Uh, there's that additional parcel here that's added on the 12. There's a new multi-use zoning classification that gets placed on parcel number six. And also the properties along here in par parcel 13 owned by the city of Goodyear for the future Loop 303, uh, those were also assigned uh, cor those corresponding zoning classifications. All public notification for this PAD amendment request were followed. Uh, staff did not receive any formal opposition to the request. Uh, we do find it would be compatible with the surrounding area. We find it is in conformance with our general plan and we are recommending approval subject to the six stipulations in the staff report. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, staff is available for any questions. Questions for staff? Commissioner Schlosser. Mr. Chairman, uh, where the, the proposed 303 alignment is, the city of Goodyear already owns that, correct? Yes, sir. The question that sticks out to me, this little triangular piece, parcel number nine, the question is, and that's still owned by the applicant? Yes, sir. Right. Why did the city not acquire that piece as well? And what, was there rationale behind that? And if not, what kind of use would you put in there? Mr. To, Chairman, to, to keep that little island there. I don't, it just seems odd to me. Chairman, Commission members, I don't know if I could defer that question to the applicant. They probably have the history on the negotiations. A lot of history on this piece. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff Wiley, 4800 North Scottsdale Road, uh, here representing the property owner. We've been working on El Sidra for six or seven years, I think, since we made the initial submittal. And uh, when we made the initial submittal, there was no 303 that was cutting through, and that was in a uh, the, the city decided that they wanted the 303 to go through the middle of the property rather down Cotton. So we had to get sidetracked and worked with the city on all of this. And ultimately, as you, as you mentioned, the city did purchase that right away. What the city purchased, what they wanted to try to purchase just enough right away for the 303. So that accommodates 
at the time of purchasing the planned 303 with the off-ramp and on-ramp. Um, through the site, the, the freeway is actually going to be elevated. So that site will be, you know, the freeway is going to go above, above grade. So on that site, you'll still be able to get access from Cotton and Elwood. Um, and it's plenty large for, you know, Walgreens, that type of use. It's even bigger than what a Walgreens site would be. So it's actually a, a fairly good site um, as far as commercial development goes. So, but that, the history is that city purchased just, that's why the lines are just like they are. Just at the time when they purchased, that was the plan for the 303. Why we're here today is, as you know, the 303 by alignment still hasn't been nailed down. And so it shifts, and, and since, since our last amendment, we've also found out about this flood control channel that, that, that flood control has put in. And, and so now we're, we've had to go back and amend all of our internal plans because it, you know, subsequent to our last amendment, we had been working with the city on uh, plats. We had pre-plats approved, final plats were, were on the way, and all of that has to really be scrapped now because with the flood control channel running along the west side of the, uh, the 303, uh, it just didn't work. So we had to go back to scratch. And since we did that, we've gone back and, and revised the, uh, the land use plan. We've also um, basically zoned now the city's 303 right away. And we did that uh, because, again, because the alignment hasn't been pinned down and it could shift, and if it shifts outside of what the city owns, the city would then be stuck with some excess right away that would no longer be in the 303. And this way, if the city were going to sell it, it will have zoning on it already. You won't have to go back and rezone it. So okay. I think staff agreed that that was a good position to take, and, and so that's why we've included it with the zoning here. Um, and what really precipitated this was the addition of, of parcel 12. When we did the original zoning case, we inadvertently left off 20 acres that, 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 that my client actually owned, and it wasn't until years later we realized that they had it. It didn't get zoned, so we had to go back and amend the PAD to add it in anyway. So with that amendment, we went ahead and revised the plans, accommodated the new channel, the shifting of the freeway as we, we knew it again, and we're here today uh, looking for another amendment to the El Cidro plan. All right, thank you. Don, a question, if I may. Commissioner Gelzer, go ahead. Um, this is probably for the applicant. Um, could you think there used to be townhouses in parcel five, is that correct? And, and that's going to change um, through this amendment, is that correct? Could you give me some background on why we're shifting from multiple family to um, a less dense type of, of is that because of the flood control channel or, you know, what's the reasoning behind that? It is. The flood control channel caused us to have to go back and, and relay out uh, all those parcels, parcels four, five, and three. Um, so what we, we did is we, we eliminated that. It wasn't, it wasn't apartments, but it was kind of a row home or it really hadn't been platted yet. But um, because of the channel, we went back, we reduced the density on that particular parcel and eliminated that townhome type product. Um, and and uh, to accommodate both the channel and now the collector that runs up through there the way it's been realigned. There's still a potential on parcel six for that townhome product, but uh, right now we're trying to leave as much flexibility with parcel six as we possibly can because it's really hard to plan that particular site, um, especially given the fact that we're still not sure if that's going to be an on-ramp, off-ramp situation and until this alignment gets pinned down. Okay, uh, so, so in essence, you're really saying is with the uh, flood control going down the west side of this proposed 303 alignment, the 303 alignment has been pinned down, that it's better that we have some flexibility to be able to move product around, but once, once we nail down those arterial or those, those, those two items, then we're going to come back, then we're going to present some type of a, a mixed but it has zoning, but we even may change it depending on what the market conditions well, are. Is, is, the do way I we understand that, is Commissioner, the way, under, the way what we're presenting it is that um, with parcel six, we've pretty much got the other parcels pinned down as far as, far as the residential parcels. Parcel six, uh, like I say, it could go anyway. What we envision there with the multi-use zoning is that depending upon the use, it would come back. It would have to go through the site planning process, but we wouldn't have to go back and rezone the property again if, say, we wanted to do commercial on that site or we wanted to do the townhomes. It would still have to go through site planning and platting or whatever the, whatever it may be, but we wouldn't have to go back and rezone it again. Do you guys have enough buffer 
um, between your residential and the flood control channel and 303 so that, you know, you, you think it'll be both marketable and, and obviously staff um, will have to look at these site plans to make sure we have that, you know. Yes, we do feel it's marketable. In fact, the flood control channel is going to provide more of a buffer than we originally thought when we had the PAD approved the first time because we didn't. I think that initially the flood control channel is going to be on the other side of the freeway. So now with the addition of that, uh, it's going to be a much larger buffer between the residential and, ulti and ultimately the 303. Okay. Ken, is, is flood control just grass or concrete, or is there going to be some kind of landscaping in, in a flood control channel? And would you be responsible or the ultimate would be responsible, or would that be the flood control district who would put in trees or whatever? You know, I do not know what kind of construction the flood control tunnel is going to be. I, I doubt it's going to be concrete, but I can't tell you that for sure. Ultimately, they are going to be responsible for building the channel. This is a large regional channel that the flood control district is building, so um, they're in the process right now of acquiring right away for the channel, and uh, once they get that done, they will be building it to whatever standards they have. I'm just not privy to those. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bud, do you have anything else to add? No, I think it was a pretty self-explanatory what, what was in the staff report. Do any commission, uh, commission members have any other questions for either the applicant or staff? Thank you. Is there anyone, uh, members of the public, who would like to uh, comment on this case? All right, I will uh, close the public hearing. We have one. I didn't sign a card. My name is Rochelle Gribbler. I live at Cotton Lane and Lower Buckeye Road. And I want to thank you for your time, Chair, Mr. Mr. Chairperson and members of the board. Um, we would like to find out. I've got a couple um, neighbors with me. We'd like to have an explanation of number seven and eight, parcel number seven and eight, because this is what affects us um, as residents right next door. It's very close to our properties. And we're considered attractive nuisances because we're in Maricopa County Island with large parcels. So if we could just have an explanation, know what our buffer is going to be and how we're affected by this. We've been trying to watch this 80 acres here. Okay, thank you for your time. Uh, parcel 7 and 8 haven't changed at all from the original approval. Um, they, they maintain the same uh, zoning category they had the first time around. Uh, the preliminary plotting on that has already uh, I don't know if it's been approved. I think it has been approved. But we aren't, we're not proposing any changes. So the same buffers that were in place when we got it approved the first time are, are still there. It's, it's all the same. And I don't know if you've been around since 2007 when we did the first case, but um, nothing, nothing's changed on parcel 7 and 8. I don't know. We, we did change the colors because the old the old land use map just had lotting. It had lots and things on that like that. It was a lot of detail you really wouldn't have on a land use map. So uh, it, the, the map, the zoning map just has colors that represent the zoning categories instead of having all the lotting. But the lotting plan, I believe, this is, this is the old land use map that was approved previously. This lotting configuration is still what we're looking at. I would like to have a little more explanation on number eight because that affects my property. I live right on this corner right here, you know, and they take, but it is, they were talking about the channel. They built the channel up to lower back high. They never completed it here. They built the channel in front of my house and all I have is totally erosion and weeds and I keep moving down the weeds to make it look good for the city of Goodyear. And, uh, but the city won't maintain it. Nobody would maintain it. I gotta maintain it, you know. So I wanna know what they're gonna do. What is gonna be a number eight? Because from that point right there to this point there is my five acre parcel. Mr. Chairman, we need his name for the for the record. Please. Yes, 
Sir, would you, would you mind stating your, your name and address for the record? My name is Augustine Hernandez. I live in, in the corner of 168th Avenue and Dunlap, which I call, El I call Dunlap, you call it Elwood. Again, I, I, I can just show uh, this. This is again at the layout for the, the lotting that is was approved 2007 and 2008. It's still the layout for the lotting that we're proposing. So it's going to be homes in some fashion of that. As far as the channel goes, I do believe that the, now the flood control plan for the channel, as it approaches Lower Buckeye, is going to go across the road, I believe, and then come down. The west side. I don't. I don't think you're going to have the two channels. I think at one point in time there's going to be a channel running down Cotton, but I think now the plan is to divert the flows and it's going to run in a channel along the west side of the 303. Um, I don't know about the erosion that's occurring out there. Well, I mean, the certainly, you, you, you're telling them one thing. The city tells me another thing. The city tells me that they're going to continue that channel and join it all the way across on Dunlap, all the way across it, my property. If, if it's it, already in front of my property. If there's a planned channel down Cotton, of course, we would construct. If it's a normal drainage channel, that would be constructed as part of our improvements when we did our improvements to the site. I'm just not aware. I, my understanding is that main channel's gotten shifted over, but it, we're kind of at the mercy of flood control right now to determine what they want to do. But as far as our plans for Parcel 8, nothing has changed since what was approved in 2007. I know, but how many houses per acre are you going to put in there? Well, it's whatever it was at the time. Can you see on this? I got a, about a 3,000, over 3,000 square foot home right on the corner. Are you going to build me some Cracker Jack boxes right next to me? Yeah, the, I mean, the density on parcel 8 hasn't, again, changed. I can't remember. I don't know what the count is. Do you have it? It's probably around four units to the acre. density for that parcel is. I think it's like 4.88, 6 units to the acre, it looks like. <coughs> it's in the range of a little over 4 dwelling units per acre. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just in, with respect to the uh, uh, drainage channel, it was my understanding uh, was the same as Mr. Bailey's that it was going to be picked up on the uh, east side of the street and taken to the west. Um, although if Mr. Hernandez has heard something different, he may have heard something more recent. But I'll certainly mention it to the city engineer about Mr. Hernandez's concern. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Um, but I will entertain a uh, motion on this case. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to approve this case. Uh, I, I guess my comment is I appreciate the adjacent landowners' concerns something that was approved it's not something that's being asked of us tonight so we can't address it it's not something that was on the agenda and not the issue at hand so but with that I'd make a motion to approve uh, case 09-200-00017 okay. got a, a motion um, from Commissioner Slosser we have a second 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 from Commissioner Peters. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Yeah, I just, uh, I just have one. I agree with Commissioner Schlosser's comments, uh, and I just hope that somebody could get Mr. Hernandez an answer to his question. Yeah. All right. Um, you've heard the motion. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Opposed? I from I from the East Coast. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Gelzer. Um, by your vote of six eyes, you have approved case 09-200-00017. Last case um, is case 10-220-00001, uh, the Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment. Uh, and I will open the public hearing. Mr. Schmitz. Mr. Chairman, Commission members, uh, this item, <clears throat> as you noted, is a text amendment to the Zoning Ordinance that we have proposed to uh, primarily establish a special use category for energy generation facilities. The zoning ordinance currently is uh, fairly silent on that particular type of use. And we have been getting inquiries from a variety of companies uh, because of the increased interest in uh, solar energy generation in particular, thanks to uh, some of the recent state legislation that is providing uh, state and federal legislation that is providing incentives uh, and making it more cost effective to pursue these types of facilities. So uh, in the course of reviewing the ordinance for establishing this category, we found that we needed to address a couple of definitions at the same time. So in addition to creating a definition for energy generation facility, we created a de definition for on-site electric generation equipment and also a definition for public utility facilities, uh, which uh, were uh, previously not uh, in the zoning ordinance. Uh, as I noted, the primary reason uh, for creating the definition for energy generation facility is to establish what, what that is, what that in fact uh, is and to some extent of what it does not include. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was clear that on-site electric generation equipment would not be considered an on-site generation or a electric generation facility even if uh, the on-site equipment sold some power back to the grid. Uh, the electric generation facility is particularly designed for the purpose of selling power to the grid and although it may use some power on-site. so. Uh, the one definition is for the for the facility that's basic principal use is generating electricity that may use some on the site. The on-site generation equipment is primarily for use on site, but if they have excess, they may sell back to the grid. So uh, that was the primary reason for that. The uh, term public utility facilities uh, entered into the mix when we were looking at the various uh, ordinance sections to change and basically realized that there, there was not a definition for it yet. Public utility facilities were mentioned throughout the ordinance. Uh, there was those that were distinguished uh, by the terminology of that they were designed to serve the immediate area. Uh, but there were also sections where the public utility facilities were permitted outright and we felt that that would be appropriate at this time to clarify that definition. So the changes that you see um, are the addition of the, of the definitions, the uh, adding of uh, public utility facilities to serve the immediate area uh, in the C1 district, CO district, the C1 district, and uh, clarifying in the C2 district that public utility facilities and offices um, include facilities that are needed to serve the immediate area but not uh, don't include any outside storage or maintenance yards. If you look at the types of uses that are allowed in the C2 district, you, you, you could see that a utility uh, facility that um, had outside storage of poles or equipment probably wouldn't fit in, in with the category of the other uses in the C2. And then um, <clears throat> we also added language to the public facilities district because that is the uh, principal district that we have used for, uh, in particular for water reclamation facilities, uh, wastewater treatment plants. And so uh, those were not specifically uh, listed in, in the district. Um, what's listed was facilities owned, leased, or operated by city, count, state, 
county, state, United States government or school districts, but we wanted to make sure that it was clear that even though we had used this district for wastewater reclamation facilities that they were not specifically mentioned, so we added that to that district. And then <clears throat> two other points, we uh, tried to clarify what was allowed in the I-1 Light Industrial Park District and I-2 District. Uh, public utility facilities uh, were added to the list in the in I-1 district as uh, pr a principal permitted use and then uh, they were already electric and gas utilities were already mentioned in um, the I-2 district so we added public utility facilities uh, to that and uh, right before the meeting I had distributed a change to those two items that I, I'd like to touch on in a minute. Uh, after I uh, close out with the, the last change of the energy generation facility itself, which would be listed as a special use under the list of uses, special uses that could be considered in any district. The uh, revision that I passed out, uh, and hopefully you can find amongst your papers, has uh, some uh, red uh, changes uh, denoted at the top of the page under item uh, section six, item number nine, it's, it currently says public utility facilities but not including an energy generation facility, wastewater treatment plant or water reclamation <coughs> facility. That is actually contained within the definition and does not necessarily need to be restated here. So what I am proposing is just to delete the balance of that sentence. And then secondly, under uh, section seven, item 13, uh, it says public utility facilities, but not including electric generation facility. Once again, the energy generation facility is already specifically excluded from the definition of public utility facilities. And I had not uh, included wastewater treatment plants and water reclamation facilities because a sewage treatment, disposal and treatment was already listed in the I-2 district, but I think it would be beneficial to add it back in under this category for additional clarification. Uh, lastly, I had received a comment uh, uh, from uh, Liberty Water uh, expressing some concerns about the proposed changes and what potential impact it could have on its current zoning and what it might have on future. Uh, I have given, uh, I've distributed a copy of those comments that we had received uh, from Liberty Water. Uh, basically, the, the concern was uh, threefold. One was how the change would affect the uh, uh, phase two expansion of the existing plant on McDowell. Uh, basically, that property is already zoned public facilities district and would not be affected by the change. If anything, the change clarifies that wastewater treatment facilities are permitted in that district. Uh, the second site they have is on uh, McDowell at near Cerebral. Uh, likewise, that site is already designated as public facilities site in the PAD for Palm Valley uh, phase eight. And once again, would not be uh, affected by the proposed change, uh, negatively affected, potentially positively affected. And then lastly, there was uh, uh, a contention that was raised by Liberty Water that the C2 district by having the um, uh, term public or phrase public utility facilities and offices being listed as a principal permitted use uh, could be interpreted to include water reclamation facilities or wastewater treatment plants and uh, we respectfully disagreed with that interpretation that uh, and based on the fact that we had never uh, taken that position in the past all of the wastewater reclamation facility water reclamation facilities and wastewater treatment plants that we have processed have all gone through the public facilities district and not a not a general commercial district. So uh, we are not uh, inclined to make any change in that direction at this point. So our recommendation to you tonight is to recommend to the city council that this text amendment be uh, considered uh, recommended for approval with the uh, changes that were distributed to you and highlighted in uh, red. That concludes my presentation and I'll stand for any questions you might have. Thank you, commission or questions from Chairman, uh, are there? You mentioned that there's. You've 
the city's been approached by energy generation facility users or whoever. Uh, is there certain areas of the city that the city has said they prefer to uh, that those kind of uses be placed where this text amendment would benefit that? Uh, Chairman Lux, uh, Commissioner Slosser, uh, we have not uh, identified specific sites for the companies. They basically are searching for sites and then, and then they come to us. But rather than having to be put in a position of, of rezoning the property to an industrial use or some other, or even rezoning the property from the current agricultural use, uh, the special use gives us the flexibility to consider that use now without having to change the underlying zoning. I think that's the principal driver behind this uh, proposal. Um, these solar facilities, um, they like to talk in terms of useful life. There are, um, you know, there's, there's emerging technology and after a certain point in time, there's kind of diminished returns on some of these uh, facilities. The photovoltaics, I think, over time, they're, um, the amount of uh, electricity they can generate from the equipment declines. And so it could actually be viewed as somewhat of a temporary or interim use where as the, as the city continues to develop, that the land upon which it is located may become more valuable and actually displace that use at some point in time. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that we are considering it, uh, you know, that we want to displace that, that the use because the, the green uh, energy is, is something that we want to promote. But uh, it may, in fact, be a compatible interim land use in many cases without having to change the underlying land use. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Joe, I have a quick question. Um, in the, the definition, um, it, I wonder if it's of, of the generation facility, I wonder if it's too limiting because you, because it's limited to fossil fuel, solar, or wind. I mean, there, are, you know, I, I could perhaps envision other types of renewable um, energy generation facilities that m may arise. Um, are, would we be allowed to consider those? Um, as well, or is this just going to be limited to, to the, the, these particular renewables? Uh, uh, Vice Chairman Lux, as it's currently drafted, it would be limited to the types that are listed. Uh, nuclear was intentionally left off at this point in time, um, but because I'm not sure that we're we're ready for that, but. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I, I wasn't going with, with nuclear, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, there are other, I, I, like biomass, biogas, for example. Yes. Or, you know, things of, uh, aren't there are some others with, you know, using landfill gases and such also? I mean, it seems like, you know, the potential may exist for, for others. That, that we may want to include as, as well. Um, yeah, I don't know that, that I would be um, overly thrilled with you know, putting a, a nuclear plant close to our, you know, some of our neighborhoods that we could become. Well, I, I appreciate the comment. Uh, it's possible we may have overlooked uh, something else uh, in a category other than uh, one we wouldn't want. So we'll re, we'll re-examine that. Uh, the difficulty is if you change the language to including but not limited to, it perhaps opens the door a little bit too wide. So we were trying to be somewhat narrow in the uh, construction of it, but we can I can certainly take that under advisement, and we can consider uh, modifying that before to, it goes to council. And you know, come back every you know so often whenever some new. Right. Well, there's biofuels. I mean, there's uh, there's corn, there's uh, algae, there's potential chemical reaction, I suppose. So uh, we may maybe we inadvertently left a couple out. So we'll certainly consider that. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you.
have a card from Mr. Prescott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, David Prescott, 2850 East Camelback Road, Phoenix, Arizona. Newland Communities uh, is in favor of this amendment, especially the amendment about the special use change for the uh, energy generation facility. Uh, I was one of the people in one of those meetings where we had um, a firm from Germany come in and uh, quite frankly, for a whole series of reasons, Goodyear is in a very positive position for these type of renewable resource electrical generating facilities. They're passive facilities, they don't use water, they're photovoltaic, and there's other sources as the chair has uh, mentioned tonight. So, and that's something new is in favor of. We like, we're very green, we like the green technology, so we're in favor of this, whether it, it goes on Australia's property or someplace else, it's, it's a positive change. And I think staff did a really good job of drafting up this ordinance. Is there anyone else uh, from the public who would like to comment on this case? Okay, with that I will close the public hearing and uh, request uh, commission action. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve case number 10 uh, one zero two two zero 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 one with the changes that staff highlighted. Got a motion? Second. Second from Commissioner Williams. Uh, commission comments? Nothing from the East Coast? Oh, the liberal from the East Coast thinks this is really good stuff and is going to be voting in favor of it. Does that mean that Mr. Prescott would be in favor of the Australia Mountain Ranch nuclear generating facility then? <laughs> 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 Sorry. All right, there is a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, by your vote of six ayes and zero nays, you have recommended case uh, 10-220-0001, the uh, text amendment to the zoning ordinance. Um, all right, staff communication. Um, <coughs> Mr. Vice Chairman, I had uh, wanted to report to you on the uh, city council work session meeting that was held on Monday. Uh, the council was briefed on electronic marquees. Uh, they were given some background information. Uh, we're using that terminology to refer to what may other, others may call electronic billboards or billboards that have changeable messages. And uh, the council was briefed on uh, what they were and what other cities have been doing and the, the options available to the, to the city in considering these types of facilities in our community. And I think the general uh, consensus was that the council was interested in pursuing a, at least one uh, or more uh, along the I-10 corridor. And uh, they uh, directed staff to uh, schedule a public hearing to take public comment on the concept and then uh, move in a direction of developing a request for proposals for a competitive bidding process or proposal process. So I just wanted to update you on that um, or, and answer any questions I guess you, you might have. And then um, secondly, I did want to mention to you that the BLM uh, is hosting public meetings on the proposed Sonoran Solar Energy Project. That is the solar thermal energy project that is proposed uh, basically in Buckeye, just north of the Sonoran uh, Desert National Monument and just due west of our uh, municipal planning area. Uh, it's about a mile west of our municipal planning area. The city has been uh, participating in the initial development of the EIS as a cooperating agency, which uh, allowed us to have uh, access to information as it was being developed and commenting along the way. Uh, this is now moving into the draft 
document uh, EIS process. And so the public meetings will be held next week, uh, Tuesday, April 27th, 6.30 at the BLM National Training Center in Phoenix, Wednesday, April 28th, 6.30, Gila Bend High School in Gila Bend, and Thursday, April 29th, 6.30 at the Buckeye Union High School. So that's the one that is closest to us uh, and probably most convenient. I just wanted you to be aware of it. It's a, if you haven't heard much about it, I can uh, provide you with information, but basically it's a 375 megawatt uh, solar thermal plant. It's a plant that uh, basically uses uh, parabolic mirrors to focus the energy of the, the sunlight energy onto a tube that goes in through the middle of the parabolic mirror and it heats fluid with inside that tube and then that tube is used uh, at, at the temperature of 700 some degrees to turn water into steam and then the steam in turn powers generators that creates electricity. Um, it's proposed to occupy 4,000 acres with these mirrors in the, in the plant facility so it's a significant project and if you're interested I can provide you with more information and, uh, and, and the details on the meeting if you didn't catch all that. Uh, and then lastly, on behalf of staff, uh, we wanted to welcome Commissioner Short and, and let her know that uh, we're here to help you uh, become knowledgeable and adjust to the commission. So uh, please feel free to contact us at any time uh, to assist you. Thank you so much. That I've gotten lots of good support from you folks already, and I appreciate that very much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Um, well, with that. I move we adjourn. Commission's adjourned.